Hey guys, I just got back from picking up a project. This is probably going to be a few episodes, so it's not going to be all at once, but this is a project I'm going to be working on for a while, and I'm super excited. It's going to be quite elaborate. Ah, I wouldn't even call it that elaborate, but it's going to be quite involved, and I hope you guys like the progression. And, but I'm going to introduce the project today. I'm really not going to do any work on it because I don't have everything that I need to start yet. That's coming. But we'll show, we'll get the thought process rolling. Please like, subscribe, comment, questions. I, I promise I'll answer anything I can. And if I don't know what it is, I will find the answer to it. But all of that stuff really helps me along. So let's get into what we're doing here well I don't really need you for this so you're getting left behind I do have developed a squeaky belt which bugs me it started squeaking a little bit last time once the engine got warm it was okay so anyhow That's where that went. Once this guy gets warmed up, we're going for a bit of a road trip. So I'm actually not going that far. Not much of a road trip. So really, I've done the road trip a lot. From Dad's Farm to Ceres, which is south all the way to the US border from here, is the same distance that I'm going today, except I'm going north. About 50, 55 minutes. So. Yeah. See what I mean? Warmed up. Still a slight little squeak. I don't know if it's a bearing or belt. I have new belts for it. When I get into the shop, hopefully, possibly next week, because I'm going to build a riser plate for this guy. So I need to lift this up three to three and a half inches depending on what plate thickness we use and all that, so that I can get fenders on here properly spaced out. So I'm gonna be doing, yeah, the plate, the fenders. I should have some stairs. I'm gonna go check on those today or later in the week. This was pretty gross in the next couple of days. What have we got here? We call that a project. Should be fun. So, they say, how does it go? When the cat is away, the mice will play? Well, Dad's down in Arizona right now. So I have full reign around the farm to do essentially whatever I want. And you're going to see project number one right here. I bought this a couple weeks ago. Finally had time to get up there and pick it up. And luckily, I did it this morning. When I did, I wish I would have gone about 15 minutes earlier because the last 10 miles was freezing rain and a lot of it. But nonetheless, it's here. Let's talk about it. Let's talk why I'm doing it. 
And this is probably going to end up being several episodes, so you may as well see what it's going to start out as. So what we have right here is the makings of a spray tender trailer. So I, I've been super excited about doing this. Uh, I, I like doing plumbing and pumps and designing stuff from scratch. So I bought this set up off of another farmer about an hour away. They were using it primarily as a nurse. So it would just bring chemical out to the field and they would park it and then suck off the, the fluid either to fill their drill with liquid fertilizer or they were running two sprayers. So they would need two of these. Anyhow, each of these tanks is 1550 gallons this one might actually just be a tiny bit less but it'll be very close to the same and those two as well it's all three inch plumbing except for a couple liner spots like this is a spot where they filled and uh they were i think he he was kind of describing what they had going on there i was actually looking I was, I bought this guy off of Facebook, of all places. I have actually sold something on Facebook. I don't think I've bought anything off of Facebook, at least for the farm. I don't think I've bought anything yet. Now I have. The, actually I may have. I can't remember if that one was Kijiji or not. Anyhow, I had been assuming I wouldn't be able to find something that would work the way I wanted it to. And so I was kind of planning, okay, well, I'll need to buy a trailer and I'll need to buy some tanks and I'll need to buy some plumbing. And I, I do have the chem handler. That was the first, or it's actually a chem bind. It's, that's the first thing I bought. And then I said, okay, well, I was doing some research. I wanted to know what I was going to be legal for, how much weight, um, how, and uh, doing some math, like how much volume I'm going to need, this, that, the other, what kind of layout I want to do. And I kind of got to the point where it's like, okay, well, I know what I want is about 3,000 on the front, gallons on the front, 3,000 on the back, and I would like to have a chem handler in the middle. I'll talk about orientation another way. And I said, I would like to have a 48 foot trailer just to be slightly shorter sliding axle uh, again, cause I would like to be able to transfer some weight around if I need to, and to give me a slightly shorter turn radius. I had budgeted for the tanks, for the trailers, for the plumbing, for everything. And what I found was this guy and this guy with the four tanks. All of the three inch plumbing that's on here, there's actually a little bit more on top of, don't know if you, ooh, on the top of the trailer there, it's all covered in snow. And this big hose and the trailer for what I had budgeted for less than what I had budgeted for just the tanks alone. So we're already coming out ahead. Now that brings me to my next point. This is not the trailer I was hoping for. I'll show you why. So let's do some really basic math here and I will get you, if you follow along, you'll see why I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Four tanks, 1,550 US gallons a piece. A US gallon weighs 8.33 pounds. So four times 1,550 is 6,200 times 8.33 is 51,600-ish, 500-ish, somewhere in that ballpark. We're gonna divide that by 2205, so there's 2,205 pounds per metric ton. Uh, 2205, it's actually not exactly that, but it's close enough. That gives me 23, we'll call it and a half ton of water. That's just water. That doesn't include the weight of the trailer, which I would guess to be between 11 and 13,000 pounds. So we're just gonna call it six ton for easy math, six metric ton. That doesn't include the weight of the plumbing, 
the or and the tanks themselves each tank probably weighs a few hundred pounds so i'm going to add another ton for all that so we are at 30 and a half right there plus i would my ooh, my chemical handler that's probably weighs i don't think it's a thousand kit or i don't even think it's 500 kilograms but what i'm going to lump together is i would like to build i'm going to add some handrails here and i'm probably going to add a rack to set some totes on so i have some storage underneath the totes so i'm going to say between the rack the handrails and the the tote the combine we'll call that another ton so that brings me up to 31.5 and i haven't even added any chemical to the equation a couple say thousand liter totes of glyphosate on top of that rack and a few boxes of chemical or adjuvant or whatever well let's let's add another three to four ton for three ton for that that gives me what 37 ton so with the weight of the water all the accessories the trailer the semi you know we're everything fully loaded I would have to guess 38 to 40 ton and that would exceed secondary highway legal weights now is that i'm going to have a lot of weight on a pair of tandems so why don't i get a trident and that's what i did and that's coming soon uh, it's no spring chicken but it's it's a tritum so it, by going up to a tritum that's going to give me an extra five ton on secondaries and seven ton on primary or for my american friends additional eleven thousand pounds on secondary and fifteen thousand pounds on primary also it's going to cut the com compaction way down on that so that's going to make it easier to get in and out of softer fields um, and keep in mind, I don't need to run this full all the time. But I want to be able to if it's needed. If we have a real wet year, I may as well do a half load and float rather than do a full load and sink. As you can see, there's a storm rolling in. It wasn't really supposed to get serious until a bit later in the afternoon. It's a couple hours early, but that's just splitting hairs. So one of the first things I want to do I need and it's going to depend on which way the the uh, chem handler is plumbed in I might need to put all these on the other side again it depends on the chem handler and it depends on the way the trailer is set up because if it's number one thing to do i don't like those hoses hanging off the sides so we might have to turn the tank orientation and plumb a t in somehow direct and whatnot this guy i'm gonna take off and i'm gonna cap it i'm gonna use him underneath somewhere and probably just hang it and that's gonna be for when we need to run the little pump off of that tank over there to fill because that's a really good valve no point in throwing that away and i want to make sure that this guy runs underneath if the other trailers comparable might get tied to those and go all the way back because i don't want to worry have to worry about crushing this with the forks or anything. There must be liquid fertilizer in there. Yeah, so this guy, however they get plumbed in, whether it's this guy's gonna be turned to here, and this guy's gonna be turned to there and whatever, we will film that in the future. But then it's gonna have to drop through 
and they actually had something drop through before so it'll be a 90 somewhere and it'll just drop straight and it'll run now either the cam handler is going to i keep on saying handler but the cam bind is going to be here and so then we're going to have to run one from the back up or vice versa i get the feeling the cam handler is going to end up being here and same thing we'll make sure that these are oriented in the right way that they're not overhanging or protruding yeah so they had things like i said plumbed in to just suck out but they also had a transfer pump there but i'm hoping that i can use most of what they have already on the other trailer to accommodate what i need and i don't have to buy a lot of fittings and everything but i'm thinking it's more likely going to end up well, they did that one backwards that yeah so this kind of area forward to that or I guess this is the back of the trailer, but that kind of area is all going to be the combine and the mixing hopper and, you know, maybe some other stuff. Oh, I definitely want to put like a, a couple of light poles up. Just, you know, sometimes we end up spraying at night or into the night. Don't want to mix the wrong chemical or be causing an accident or anything like that. And then, like I said, handrails to flip down. And then the last four or five feet will be a rack, probably about this high, which is, we'll say, four feet high. And then we'll be able to put totes on top. And I don't want them to protrude too much higher. Or I don't want them higher at all than the, uh, than the tanks. So there's definitely a few things I don't have entirely figured out, and I cannot deny that one bit and it's simply because i haven't had either it on site or i haven't had the time to fully think it through like i don't know what i'm going to do with this trailer when i'm when i've got everything on the other one do i just keep it as a spare flat deck do i throw the other because there's that black tank wherever it is there and a white tank on the other side of the trees there. I could put those on it and just have an extra water trailer. Because we still need those tanks. It'd be nice to have them plumbed together. It'd be nice to have them easily transportable. I don't know. Maybe I turn this guy into a bale trailer. Not that we need it, but I could probably sell it. I might just sell it as a flat deck. Or... Maybe I get real ambitious and build something like, I don't know, maybe a, some form of seed cleaner or I don't know, maybe I put a sea can on it and I, I, I don't know. I haven't got that far yet. That to me seems very distant and really not critical. Obviously I don't have the alignment of everything and the plumbing all figured out yet but that can be done on the fly for the most part i actually think i'm going to have more space in the middle than i had initially accounted for which probably gives me an extra foot or so in the middle and again you know that stand that i plan on making i might take another foot off of that it's all fairly flexible stuff nothing's critical it's more of the ideas it's i want to have a spot where you're going to get up and that's your walkway so there's going to be some nice proper handrails uh, all these ones here are going to be fold down the ha handler's going to be well laid out plumbed in directly have a strainer at a spot that's easily available so that it's not a uh, a shit show to change or to empty your screens out if you happen to get some algae in there like this is going to save us a lot of time a lot of manpower and it's actually going to give us the opportunity to spray 
more as far as we're going to have less downtime. We're going to be able to spray more water and we're going to be able to potentially look at land that is further away if we happen to be given the opportunity. Yeah, so this guy right here is, as you can see, the triaxle that I'm putting under everything. And, you know, like I said, it's it's not as good of shape, but overall it's still pretty, pretty good for what I need it to be. So I think I'll learn to live with it. The one thing that is a bit different is I may have to like figure out a way through this from one side to the other. So thanks again for watching everybody. Again, if you have any comments or questions or what have you, please let me know. Uh, I appreciate any feedback. I also try and answer any questions that I can. Also, please like and subscribe.